I'm bored of my Joy-Cons again and I'm one of those people that gets an idea to change something and just feels compelled to do it immediately. Like one of those girls who changes their hair every month except instead of changing my hair, I'm changing my Joy-Cons. Buying customized Joy-Cons can get pretty expensive. If you're gonna go look on eBay or Etsy or something like that, they're gonna charge you hundreds of dollars. So we thought we'd teach you how to just DIY it. Now I am gonna leave you in Laura's capable hands for the majority of this video, because let's be honest, she's the better looking one. And also because she is the queen of DIY. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy our videos. And let's just dive straight into things. Hi guys, it's me. So for this tutorial, you're gonna need some old Joy-Cons. I'm gonna use these ones that I ruined with these ugly stickers. You're gonna need some new replacement shells. You can get these from eBay, Etsy, and usually for pretty cheap. I think I got these ones for like $10. I've never done this before, but I'm gonna replace the buttons this time. So I got some of those. You'll need a 1.5 millimeter Phillips head screwdriver and a 1.5 millimeter tri-wing screwdriver. You can get these on eBay as well for pretty cheap. I'm gonna use a plastic prying tool, which comes in really handy for removing the battery and things like that. And another essential item are needle nose tweezers. These make removing the ribbon cables so much easier. Cool, so first of all, you're gonna need your 1.5 millimeter tri-wing screwdriver and you have to remove these four screws in the back. They are actually really hard to remove and pretty easy to strip. So you might want some replacement screws or something like that, or you could just be really careful. Once it's open, you're gonna to want to move onto your Phillips head screwdriver and take out this one screw that's holding the railing to the back plate. It's a good idea to remove the battery next, which is connected by this little black plug. It's pretty easy to remove with your fingers. The battery is stuck down with a sticky tab, so if you're gonna pry it out, just make sure that you're using plastic and not something metal. There's another piece that's held down by these three little gold screws, so take those out with your Phillips head screwdriver to remove the middle section. It's still gonna be attached by a ribbon cable that leads to the ZL button, so this is where your tweezers come in handy. There's a plastic flap that holds the ribbon cable in, so flick that up and then wiggle the cable out to remove that piece. There are two more ribbon cables that are holding the railing onto the motherboard, so flick those tabs up and wiggle those ribbon cables out as well, and then you've got the three separate pieces that make up the Joy-Con. Since we started on the left Joy-Con, you have to remove the ribbon cable that leads to the minus button. It's just the same as the others, just flick the tab out and then wiggle the cable out. Ooh, and apparently my trigger button wants to come out now too. Now the only ribbon cable left to remove is for the joystick. So take that out and the joystick is also held down by two little gold screws, which you're gonna need your Phillips head screwdriver to remove. There's a couple of components at the top of the Joy-Con that lead to the left trigger button and the minus button. They're held down with three silver screws, which you can take out with your Phillips head screwdriver. Now you're ready to take out the motherboard. So using the Phillips head screwdriver, again, it's only held together with two little silver screws. The Phillips head is used for everything inside the Joy-Con, and then the tri-wing is used for the screws outside of the Joy-Con. Now that the motherboard's free, it's only held down by the HD rumble sensor. This is actually a bit of a mission to get free because it's held down with another sticky tab, but the plastic prying tool really comes in handy and you'll be able to get it out if you try for long enough. So most of the important parts have pretty much been removed now. There's just one more ribbon cable that's behind the ZL button. These are super hard to remove once again, so the prying tool really came in handy. And once you have this button free, there are two little springs. Make sure you don't lose those because they're actually pretty important to the functionality of your button. There's also a third screw on the trigger button that just flew out of my Joy-Con before, so put that in a safe place as well. 
This ribbon cable is just held down by one silver screw, so take that out, and then at that point it's pretty easy to remove. It just fell out for me. <laughs> But now you're up to the fun part. It is finally time to start building your new Joy-Con. So make sure that you're putting all of the buttons in the right spot. Obviously, it would be a bit awkward if your arrow buttons are pointing out to the wrong direction later on. One thing that I did note about my new buttons that I got is that they didn't come with these little rubber pads that sit behind the buttons in order to make them work properly. They are a pretty essential part of the design of the Joy-Con, so you might need to pill for those parts from your old Joy-Con. I have seen packs of these little rubber pads online and you can get them in all sorts of different colors. So that's another option for you for further customization, but you can't really see them once the Joy-Con is assembled, even if your cases are see-through. And now it's time to rebuild this bad boy. Rebuilding it is pretty easy. It's kind of just like a jigsaw puzzle. I guess the hardest part is trying to remember where the screws go because there are four screw holes for the motherboard but you only need two of them at this stage so you just need to put two silver screws in the top right hand corner and the bottom left hand corner. The other two screw holes are going to be used later on to attach the middle plastic plate to the motherboard. Now you can attach the components for the minus button and the left trigger button with the three silver screws. Before you plug that ribbon cable back in though, you must reapply your joystick because that ribbon cable kind of goes over one of the screw holes and then you won't be able to get your joystick back in. Once you've reapplied those screws, you can go ahead and plug back in the ribbon cables. Just take the end of it and give it a little bit of pressure to push it back into its socket. And once you feel that it's slid back into its socket, then you can just push the little tab down to hold it in place. If you want to check if it's secure, then you can just give a gentle pull at the ribbon cable and just see that it doesn't come back out. So the railing does actually have two colored buttons that match the Joy-Con case. So if you do want to replace those as well, then you just need to take your Phillips head screwdriver and remove the two gold screws in order to expose the buttons. Once you've exposed them, you can then feel free to take them out and put your new ones back in. But don't forget to put these little rubber parts into your new buttons before you insert them back into the railing. Once you have your desired buttons in place, then you can screw the main component back into the railing. When you do this, just try and make sure that you're putting it in the right way, <laughs> so both of the ribbon cables need to be pointing in the same direction. Then you can plug them back into the motherboard and move on to the next part, which is putting the left trigger button back in. So there is a little knob here that you need to put that spring in. When you're putting the button into place, make sure that that spring is sitting in the right place so that it maintains pressure, or else your button's not going to work properly. So that's all you have to do for the front plate. Now we're going to move on to the middle section where you're going to need to reapply the components for the ZL button. There is almost an outline made of plastic to show you where that component is meant to go and then it's just fixed with one screw. Then you can put the springs back in before you click the ZL button back into place. There are two little knobs where the springs are meant to go into. If they get somehow dislodged when you're putting the button back in, you can sort of jimmy them back into place with the tweezers. So this ribbon cable is the last one that we need to connect. You can see that the ribbon cable is kind of bent. Try and work with this bend rather than against it because it's sort of achieved by where it naturally sits inside the Joy-Con and you don't want to break the cable. This next part is optional, but I always add a piece of cardboard behind my joystick. It adds more pressure to the component and fixes drift. I did make a video on it if you want some more information, so I'll make sure to link that for you. So now that everything's plugged back in, you can start closing up the Joy-Con. In the middle section, there are three screws that hold it down to the motherboard. The top left and bottom right ones are the ones that I told you not to worry about on the motherboard before, and there's also a third screw at the very bottom of the plastic piece. Now you can put the battery back in, so that goes in the big, empty, battery-shaped hole, <laughs> and the plug just goes back into this little socket. 
So there was one button missing from my packet of replacement buttons. It's the one that attaches to the railing that's responsible for actually locking the Joy-Cons in place when you attach them to the Switch. But once you put that button back in, you can just reattach the railing to the back panel with one screw and then you're pretty much good to go. So now you can close everything up, just make sure that it's all tight and there's nothing poking out anywhere or anything. But if everything's all good, then you can just take your tri-wing screwdriver, put in those four black screws that we took out before, and then you're done. That's your left Joy-Con. So now that the left Joy-Con's done, it's time to move on to the right one. The right one is slightly more tricky because it does have the infrared sensor down the bottom. But other than that, the build of the Joy-Con is pretty much identical to the left. So I think I will speed it up a little bit and put some music over top so you don't have to listen to my annoying voice the whole time. But I will come back and explain any differences that there are to the left Joy-Con. So now that you've got it open, you can see a few differences to the left. So there is a chip here and the IR sensor down the bottom. At this point, my camera stopped recording. I'm so sorry, but all I did to remove the motherboard was remove these two ribbon cables, which came out of these two slots. Next, just pop out the NFC reader and gently remove the IR camera. You can just pull it out and pop it straight back in your new case. Then you can put the NFC reader back in. Make sure that the ribbon cable for the IR camera is still laying on top. Assemble your new home button and then you're pretty much on the home stretch again. You're basically just going to be rebuilding the Joy-Con from this point. When you lay the motherboard back in, just make sure that you're still leaving those ribbon cables exposed because they do need to go in these little sections. It's a bit tricky to get them in because they're pretty tight under the motherboard, but if you fiddle enough, you'll get them in there. Those ribbon cables are the main difference between the left and the right Joy-Con, so the rest of the process should be pretty familiar to you. We're just going through and putting all of the ribbon cables back in their little homes, and this point is the best time to put in the right trigger button too. Don't forget about it like I did. <laughs> At this point I sort of realized that my battery was busted. So it's pretty hard to tell but the battery on the left is swollen and the other one's flat. It's caused by too much current flowing through the battery but it does mean that it's not going to work so I had to replace that. Slip this chip back into its little slot and now it's time to close up your right Joy-Con. And here they are in all their glory, your brand new Joy-Cons. Hopefully they work and hopefully you fix them from drift as well if you put the pieces of card in there. It's a good idea to recalibrate your Joy-Cons anytime you mess around with them just to make sure that they're not drifting. My left one had drift super bad before I opened it up, so I did have to actually open it up again and put a second piece of card in there to fix it. But there you go. I hope that you love your new tizzied up driftless Joy-Cons and I really hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Please let me know in the comments below if you did. See, it's not as hard as you'd think it would be to reno your own Joy-Cons. I'm just such a tight ass that I can't convince myself to spend hundreds of dollars on a customized pair of Joy-Cons that are probably just going to get drift anyway. 
when I can do it myself for as little as $10. If you did follow along with today's tutorial, or you've just done this in the past yourself, we would love to see your new set of Joy-Cons. Send us a photo or tag us on Instagram at some kind of gaming. Thank you so much for watching. Laura, thank you so much for customizing our Joy-Cons. I'm gonna go steal them and play with them right now, actually. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you found today's video interesting or useful. And we'll see all of you guys right back here next week for the next one. Bye.